at the show. I would like to take just two minutes. Yes, producer, what do you think? One minute, 48 seconds. Yes, producer says I should just take one minute, 48 seconds to clear the air on some issues happening on social media, basically, specifically about um, Kennedy in Japan. You know, I would like to spend less than two minutes because I don't think Kennedy in Japan deserves two minutes of my time. No, he's not relevant. He's acting like a dog on rabies. So I wouldn't spend more than two minutes on Kennedy in Japan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to respond to Kennedy's uh, rant in less than two minutes because we have work to do. We are very much focused and we have work to do to save Mother Ghana. Now, I would like to say that, Kennedy, you know what? I will officially say the crew of Loud Silence Media and with all due respect, we really thank you for actually confirming our story on the housing scandal. You actually went to um, Germany to confirm that the story, the work we're doing was, is legit and that every information that we put out there um, was right. You actually made that confirmation and we would like to thank you very much for that bold um, uh, decision you took to defend with all your respect. Now, what I would like to say to you, Mr. Kennedy, is simple. You know, Mr. Kennedy, I am not in the business of insulting people's parents. No. I only insult people who don't want to act like humans. And I don't know your parents. I don't know your dad. I don't know your mom. So I'll not sit on my show and call them names, the meaning names and all that. No, I will not do that. But when it comes to you, Kennedy in Japan, as a person, myself, and the people of Ghana, Kennedy, let me say this in Chi. Kennedy, you know, unim, wankasa unim, say, ohun bon kokin. Maybe you didn't hear me. Kennedy Japan, from your top, from your broken jaw, all the way to that your disfigured feet. Ohun bon kokin. You see, when you speak and people are smiling and laughing, when you pass by people, the stench, the cocaine stench on you is what rings in their head. They don't see you as an intelligent man or an honest man. Or who born cocaine. And the fact is, no amount of bleach, you can use proclare bleach, you can use eja eja, you can use clean soap, you can use everything. Cocaine scent, it will never leave you. Or who born cocaine, you are infested with drugs. So, Sometimes I don't get worried when I see you misbehaving like a dog on rabies. Yes, what you exhibited in Germany shows that you are not in to fight against corruption. You rose up against Anas. You rose up against Azuri. You rose up against Ahmed Swali, which you succeeded. And you want to rise up against me. I've told you what I'm wearing here, where I'm seated, seated it's not for me. It's for the people. I work for the people. Kennedy, on whom born cocaine. So nobody, no right-thinking individual will give you that room. And I would like to say something to you. Every day I pray for you because I know that the ghost of Ahmed Swali, may he so rest in peace. The ghost of JB Dankwa, may he also rest in peace. These two people, I know their ghosts are hunting you. And you will not be surprised one of these days you get up and you've hunted yourself. Kennedy, on who born cocaine, clean yourself until you clean that. And I know it's never going to go away because you've been infested with greed. And the youth of Ghana, I would like to say this to you. Never respect any human, in this, in this sense, any pig, like Kennedy Japan. Never respect or envy any man who cannot look into your eyes and tell you the genesis of his wealth. The youth of Ghana, this is a message to you. Never, never respect or take the words of any man, in this, in this sense, Kennedy Japan, any pig, who cannot look in your eyes and tell you the genesis of his wealth. Producer, I think this is two minutes. Kennedy, a word to your wife is enough. On whom born cocaine. We are focused. Now we've got work to do for Mother Ghana. With all due respect, today we'll be talking about a lot of things, yes. I'll be talking about Kroll Associates. It's a company which is a UK company. They came to Ghana, they did a few jobs, the Auditor General has been asking questions and the questions have been bringing some answers and today I'll be giving you answers and I'll be telling you the people who were involved in this scandal. I'll be talking about three personalities. Technically, they are all MPP members like myself. Ken Oforiata, 
Yao Safmafo and Paul Adamotri. Today, I'll prove to Ghanaians with evidence that the senior minister Yao Safmafo is a prime suspect in the 1 million crore scandal. In fact, Osafmafo and the finance minister both connived to rob Ghana and collaborated with Kroll Associates, which is a scam company to defraud us $1 million. But before I start today's expose, I would like to start by clearing the air again. Yes, I would like to clear the air again. I think a week or two ago, some videos was making rounds on social media and it was Paul Adamotri on his Good Evening Ghana show. Yes, which... He, turned, he has to actually turned that show into a comedy show. He was actually busy chastising and blaming journalists for not doing their job in covering corruption issues in Ghana. In fact, a lot of people were impressed with his hypocritical show of commitment against corruption. But my question is simple. Paul Adamotri, what are you? A Jubilee House worker or just an overhyped comedy host? Paul Adamotri, you were in this country when investigative journalists were shot in broad daylight and some were even threatened. And what did you do? You sat down quietly. You wore your Vietnam suit and interviewed pastors and spiritual men. You stayed on the NCA board as a member to make sure radio stations were closed down just to suppress freedom of speech and press freedom. Paul, don't be a hypocrite. Today, you spent time with men of God who believe that destroying buildings, yes, building of church judges to build a useless, senseless cathedral is the most important thing Ghana needs now. Paul, I would like you to take off your Vietnam suit today, sit back, and take these lessons. This is what I call Journalism 101. Now, I'm going to walk Ghanaians through the process, what the Auditor General does before he comes to a conclusion. Yes, before he comes to that point where he starts to ask questions. We have to understand that the Auditor General has audited the Finance Ministry, specifically on this Kroll Associates contract. And the Auditor General ended up in his report, which I'm going to show you, asking that the Ministry of Finance should show the Auditor General proof of work done by Kroll and Associates. The funny thing is, the Senior Minister Office answers the Auditor General. Yes, the Auditor General asks the Finance Ministry a question. He gets answer from the Senior Minister's Office. But the question is, why is the Senior Minister answering the Auditor General? Because for what we know, Kroll and Associates, or Kroll Associates, worked, the work they did was for the Ministry of Finance. Now, let me pass you through, or let me take you through the process the Auditor General goes through before he comes to a conclusion, and also starts to ask reasonable questions, and ask, also demanding reasonable answers. So, this is what the Auditor General does first. First of all, the Auditor General's office writes to inform the audited institution. In this case, we're talking about the Ministry of Finance. It is called the engagement letter. Then a meeting is held with the management of the audited institution, in this case, the Ministry of Finance, and this meeting is called the entrance conference. The auditor writes, then they come in, which is the entrance conference. This is when the Auditor General's office explains the objectives, the scope, the duration, and etc. of the audit they will be undertaking. After that, then comes the execution, that is reviewing documents, yes interviews, analysis of data, and etc. So during the execution, when infractions are brought to the attention of the scheduled officers, the team leader then issues a written request. The team leader issues a written request for information which is not forthcoming to the audited institution, which in this case is the Ministry of Finance. Now let's go on. Focus. The team leader issues audit observations on the field or at the audit location in accordance to Regulation 34 of Audit Service Regulation 2011, that is a CI-70. The response must be received before the team leaves the audit location. So they expect to get the response at the Ministry of Finance before the team leaves. When the execution comes to an end, the team issues a draft management letter which contains audit observations for which the responses are not satisfactory or outstanding. Now. The draft management letter is discussed in management of the audited institutions at the exit conference. So before they leave, they discuss this, the, the letter, they discuss it before they leave. Now, two weeks after the exit conference, the management letter containing audit observations and the responses from the management is issued to management. The Auditor General goes to his office, two weeks after he issues that letter to management officially. According to Section 29 of the Audit Service Act 2000, Act 584, 
they have 30 days from the day they receive the management letter to provide to the Auditor General the responses to the observation in the management letter. So, upon receipt of the responses, or after 30 days, whichever comes first, the Auditor General's report is issued to Parliament. My fellow Ghanaians, focus. I'm doing this because I want each and every Ghanaian to understand that this is the process the Auditor General went through. That is why he's asking these questions today. Immediately, now let's go on. Immediately the report is submitted to the Speaker of Parliament. The report is published for public consumption in accordance with Section 23 of the Audit Service Act 2000, Act 584. Now, when you visit the Auditor General's website, which you, you can see here, when you visit the website, is, you can see ministries, departmental, and agencies. You will see that clearly. It is in there. When you visit the website, you see it. Now, on page 27 to page 29 of the Auditor General's report on ministries and departments, and in this specific case, on the Ministry of Finance, you will see this. Producer, can you put this there? On page 27, after they did all everything, you know, they issued the management report. They need to write back to them because the Auditor General has come in there. They have done all the checks. They've done all the auditing. They've issued a letter on things that they did not see clearly to the Ministry of Finance because we know that Crow was working for the Ministry of Finance. Now, this is what happens. When you go to the Auditor General's report, on page 27, this is what you see. You see that page 27.48 you will see payment for work not done. This is not me. I didn't write this. This is public document. You can go on their website, the Auditor General website, and you will see this. You can access this. Now, payment for work not done, 4.8 million cities. Equivalent is $1 million. It says, Regulation 39.2C of Financial Administration Regulations 2004 states that the head of the account section of a department shall control the disbursement of funds and ensure that the transactions are properly authenticated to show that amounts are due and payable. 49. The ministry procured the services of Kroll Associates in 2017 to recover assets from identified wrongdoers, investigate allegations of wrongdoing, provide evidence of asset recoveries, build capacity for the transfer of skills, advice on preventive techniques and structure to prevent and detect cor future corruption. So the Auditor General was just asking a simple question. Show me of the job that the proof of that these things were done, that Crow actually did this way. This is the simplest thing. The Auditor General is just, all this English I'm reading is that, show me proof that Crow did this job, that you paid them $1 million. Simple. Ministry of Finance. On paper, you guys work with Crow. You gave them the contract. Show us that they actually did this. Yeah, they did all the English you are writing here. You know, uh, investigate allegations of wrongdoing, provide evidence for asset recoveries, build capacity, and all the nice English. Just show us proof. It's a simple question the Auditor General is asking. Now, when you go to point 50, I would like, you can put it here. During our review, this is the, attorney, the Auditor General speaking. During our review of the contract with Crow Associates, we noted that though there was no evidence of work done, the ministry in 2018 paid an amount of $1 million to the company. Our further review showed inconsistencies in some of the documentations. We noted, for instance, that though the contract was signed in September 2017, some of the invoices attached to the payment vouchers predated the award of the contract. When you go to 51, this is what it says. It says, management in response to this observation stated that they would make the record available to us later. The Auditor General stated in his report that the Finance Ministry said we're going to make all these available, these documents, these vouchers to them. To date, as I'm speaking, the Auditor General has not received anything. And my source tells me that still, the Finance Ministry has not provided even a single document to prove to the Auditor General that Crow actually worked to deserve that $1 million. When you go to 51, 52, it says, considering the nature of the contract awarded, we are of the view that this project should have been executed for informed decisions by government regarding how state resources have been used by public officers. In view of the non-performance of Crow Associates in executing the contract, we recommended 
Hear this very well. We recommended, the Auditor General recommended that the contract be abrogated and any monies paid to the company recovered immediately. This is the Auditor General of Ghana. This is not Kominini. This is not Kennedy, Kennedy Japan, the mad dog speaking. This is a renowned man. This is a man who knows his job. He will be even surprised me having this document. But that is my job. That is what I'm telling Paul Adamotri. Learn. This is journalism 101. Now, the senior minister writes to the to the auditor to the finance ministry to push the auditor general. The auditor general does not know the minister, the senior minister in this case. In this case, he audited the finance ministry, which contracted Kroll Associates. So he's expecting the finance ministry to write to him, not the minister, the senior minister. The senior minister's office is under the office of the president. The budget of the finance ministry does not cover the senior minister's office. It is straightforward. You don't need a PhD holder without any hair, any economist without any hair to explain this to you. The Auditor General audits the Finance Ministry, asks some few questions, waiting for the Finance Ministry to answer. Now, the Auditor General sits and all that he hears is the Finance Ministry saying that, yes, the Senior Minister's Office wrote to us to send to you about the question you asked us. What kind of government is this? Now, let me read the Senior Minister's letter to you. That letter the Senior Minister wrote to the finance ministry to forward to the auditor general was written on the 23rd of august 2019 he actually cc'd the honorable deputy minister ministry of finance coordinating director ministry of finance director legal ministry of finance director of accounts all these people have knowledge of this letter and all these people were there when the auditor general came to the finance ministry to audit them they could have come out and told the auditor general auditor general we did not contract Kroll Associates and that what you are doing is cost 90. Go to the, the senior minister's office and ask them the job Kroll did. But none of these guys spoke. Why? Now, the senior minister wrote in his letter, I'm going to read some parts to you. He says, I refer to your letter reference SCR blah 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 22nd August 2019 requesting me to provide any available evidence to support the status of contract performed by Kroll Associates UK Limited. The Auditor General has not written to the Senior Minister's Office. The Auditor General actually ordered the Finance Ministry to send him proof of the work Kroll did. The, the first statement from the Senior Minister's Office shows that he is out of touch. In this case, this letter is bogus because the Auditor General is not dealing with Senior Minister Yao Safmafo. Why is he so concerned in this? But the, 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 the secret is here. After he wrote the letter to the Ministry of Finance, no war motive to go and give it to the Auditor General, they actually sent a letter to the Auditor, Auditor General. Now, they also wrote a letter to the Auditor General. It is the, it's also the management letter. This letter was sent on the 28th of August, 2019. And here what they wrote. It's very, very, very interesting. And the fourth part, he said, Proud to the issuance of your report, we informed the audit team that Ministry of Finance was arranging to obtain copies of progress report in respect of the assignment under the agreement from the office of the senior minister who are the beneficiary entity of the agreement and related payment for your audit inspection. I never knew that the senior minister's office is under the Ministry of Finance. I'm going to take this again. This is what the Ministry of Finance wrote to the Auditor General, telling them that, you know what? We are not responsible for those payments. We did not contract Kroll Associates. It is the senior of minister, Yao Osafumafo, who did the payment. In black and white, this is what they are trying to tell the Auditor General. Who paid that $1 million? And when I see Osafu Mahfou sitting on TV, speaking and talking about corruption, I see him and I shake my head. This man is the epitome of lies. He is filled with greed. Ask me why his colleagues in the Kofo administration, nobody is in this crook, this cartel government. It is because of greed. Osafu Mahfou loves greed from saloon all the way to crow. So I have 10 questions for the senior minister and the finance minister. Yes, Osaf Mafo and Ken Oforiata. Just 10 questions. They need to answer these questions. They need to answer us Ghanaians. And question number one is, senior minister says work commenced in February and contract was signed in September based on a letter of intent. Is this a valid contract and valid legal basis to commence work under the procurement laws of Ghana? 
This is a simple question. Question number two. Why is the senior minister responding to audit queries directed at the finance minister for work supposedly contracted to be done at the finance ministry? Question number three. Contract sum was paid in dollars. Who authorized this payment? Clear and simple. Question number four. Who signed the contract? Question number five. Did we need a foreign company to undertake this contract? Question number six. Do we not have state institutions charged with these responsibilities? Question number seven. Where was this contract advertised? We just want to know. Question number eight. What procurement method, if any, was used? Question number nine. Does the PPA, the Public Procurement Authority, have any records on this contract? Question number 10. Who is behind Kroll Associates? And what is the senior minister's involvement? Now I have a last question. Evidence of the work done by Kroll still not provided, right? So what structures have they put in place to stop corruption? Ladies and gentlemen, these are the questions I want the finance minister and the senior minister to answer. We are not done here. As usual, I come with the questions and I still wait for the answers. I have a lot to tell Ghanaians. There's a lot in this issue. So much money was paid, not just $1 million. And I asked the weeks go on, I'll be exposing the people behind this scandal. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not the end of this scandal. This is just the beginning. Kroll Associates have taken $1 million of our money and we need to make sure we get to the last cent of that money. And the only way we can get is to focus. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kevin Ekobedu-Taylor and this is Without Your Respect.